So now we have the correct transmitter here. So we'll just swap out this part into it. It's already mod. We should be good. Fingers crossed. Take the thing out. Usually, if the transmission is sleeping, it's getting debris top of the valve body. But this looks clean. I think Good. this is okay. Hope so. We will see. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Oh, this whole thing. Yeah, so you just just pull it. Yeah, it goes. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. And we just put the new TCM on it. This stays. First okay. we put it in here. Yeah, it goes there. It goes there. It's nice and even. Everything's like this. This goes through this hole, underneath this plastic cover, plugs right there. This goes to HIS. Like this, and then just bolt on. Yeah, exactly. Just just reinstall the bolts and uh, bolts, and that's it. Some torque. Some torque. Little torque. Yeah. Uh, Not wrist, too much. wrist torque. Paine. Paine. Juha, paine. Ai, sorry. Mä katselin täällä tämmöisiä talviautoja. Sitten kun rupeaa nämä takaverot tylsistyttää, niin täällä olisi tämmöinen karvertikaalis tämmöinen RS3, mikä, mikä on vähän koloroitu. Keulasta. Ehkä voi olla runkopalkkikin saanut vähän kipeätä. Mutta tota. Joo, 75 tonne on ajettu kaksi kertaa kolaroitu Suomi-auto, mutta 4400 heppaa. Kyllä se on hyvä katsoa ennen kuin tämmöisiä nettiautot klikkailee ostoskoriin. Kannattaa teilläkin käydä katsoa koodilla FDT 20 pinnaa alennusta. Ja mieli hyvää siitä, että tietää, että on ehjäauto tai sitten ei ole ehjäauto. Eihän mua tämmöiset pikkukolhut ehkä haittaa, jos se jos runko on pysynyt suorassa, mutta jotain saattaa haittaa. Auto tykkää teillä ajeta. Käykää katto vertikaalista. Tulee hymy huulille. Kiitos. Jatketaan. Mä jatkan nyt pumppailu. Ei kun jatka sä pumppailu. Mä jatkan nyt tätä availua. Hyvä. Okay, so we need to simply put this in the right position, in the right place. So there is a sensor at the back that needs to go in the hole. This is yeah. the output shaft speed All right. sensor. It's okay. there. It is a, there one. is a parking handle on the side. Do you mind moving the side lever for the parking? Oh, it's already. It's okay, Wait. it's there. It is there, so we need to install all the TCM bolts around, so it's, uh, it holds around. We need to fit the sleeve that used to be there, so we need to get it clean because it's all in, uh, mm -hmm. in shit. Put it there and then lock it. Looks brand new. Good. This goes in a certain position Mm -hmm. in. It will only go in one position. We can take a look where is the where is the notch yep. in here. So it should be somewhere somewhere here. Okay. Just push it all the way. Good. 
and now this locks it, locks it so it's not coming out. All right. Right, so we need to just reapply all the bolts in the correct way and should be good. Weight reduction. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so that's for the HIS, for the additional... Oh, yeah, yeah, for this. Yes. Yes, that uses the long one. Oh, yeah. No Here. weight reduction. It is quite heavy. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, because it has the oil inside. It's actually a uh, pressure accumulator. So when the car is stopped and you want to drive away, so the engine fires up, there is still no pressure in the transmission, so it cannot engage the gear. So this is when the HIS releases the pressure into the system, so uh -huh. you can drive right away, instead of oh, okay. waiting for the pressure to build up. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we That's need good. to get all them torqued. That's accurate 37, 38 Newton meters. Or maybe 80. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, and there goes the HIS, which needs to physically go back to into the oh, transmission. Because of yes, because it still closes the oil. Uh, All right. Oil system. Want to plug it in? Just. Oh. Nice. It's just, it just goes into one position, it can go wrong. You just push it there and that's it. Or oh, wait, uh, wait, we need to take this one out, this, this ball. Oh yeah, that's yeah. the long one. That's the long one, yes. Where was this from then? Uh, oh, it's the other one over here. It's the other one. Yeah. True. Simple install. You only have to have your own lathe. And <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another idea to have those ready at the shop. And that's yeah, it. true. We have the new oil pan in here, which is a sump and a filter. Joined all together. With the extraction that we don't need, set of bolts, and the pan itself. So there is no need to add any silicone around, don't seal it up. It has its own original uh, seal in here. Just make sure that it sits nice in the groove all around. And we have to take this, yes, this out. So inside you can see there is a, there is a filter, magnets that get all the metal shavings uh, stick to it and yeah, get it lubricated so it goes nice easily. All right. And that's it. So the next thing, it needs to go into the car and be reinstalled. Okay, that's good. So you already had like a, like a Shifter, yes, electronic, like, like the sequential shifter. Instead of this, then with a long hold, like in a sequential, yeah. like you long hold, yeah. and then you're in the mode. So if like in a race car, you want yeah. proper shifter. Yes. Oh, for just for the feeling, it is yeah. amazing. So trans time, transmission time. Yes. You can lift it up. Yes. We are getting close. Hello, this shot. Fuck. We have a problem. Which problem? The other one is solid. Ah. Oh, it's I not it coming out. And ah. this one is bigger than the hole in the transmission, yes? Yes. So effectively, we still need to make a hole in the transmission. Yes? Mm -hmm. Bigger. The other one, at least. It was like 18 and a half. 18 the and hole. a half, yeah. mm. And that thing was 18. It's a very secure. Don't get that all. I think Can 19 it? is too big. I have 19 in this spot. Just try to use it a little bit so it will always, you know, you are never perfectly in line, so, mm. so it.
Yeah, you are not doing me straight, so it's not going to be 18. Yeah. <laughs> but I am straight. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Grabs it to the side. Yeah, it pulls it. So use it a little. Or maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Or a little more. Do a little more. Oh, wait, wait. Okay. Nearly yes, this, this, this one. Okay. We are in. Okay. Hold steady. <laughs> don't don't uh, touch. Don't, we need okay. bolts. <laughs> So it is also important to pay attention when uh, routing your wiring so it's, it fits uh, safely and that there is no risk that, for example, the wire is too long and it may hit the output's flange because it would get torn by the drive shaft rotating, making pretty much the wires fucked up and unusable and uh, risking the short. So always make sure that it's uh, safe you can use some zip ties to, to grab the wires, or if you have the original mounts that clip into positions, it's a very good idea to use them. Just double check it, triple check it. We've seen the cases where a rotating shaft just pretty much cut the wires and made the short. I mean, I've seen, I've seen the cases, and I've been personally tuning this car, it was in Romania, when everything worked, but then when the car has been stopped, after driving, suddenly something didn't work. So you push uh -huh. the car, it works. And then what, what turned out is that the, that the wire loom just got loose. So it went down a little bit and got cut by, uh, by the output oh. shaft. And at some point it made a contact with the ground, pretty much shutting everything off. And it's like, what the hell is going on here? In the meantime, I'll go and grab some coffee. <laughs> Oh, it's a good one. 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 It's a <laughs> okay, so the first thing why we we're installing this transmission in the car is that it's different. It's still 8 HP, but 8 HP has uh, different versions, different variants, uh, depending on, first of all, the torque that is uh, designed for. So we have like 8 HP 45, which in theory is designed for 450 Newton meters, and 70, which is designed for 700 Newton meters. In reality, those numbers are, let's say, too low, so. 45 can couple like 600 torque, 70 with like 1200, but still, lower number after 8 HP, 8 HP means it's eight gears, lower number means lower torque capacity, higher number means higher torque capacity. But then we have some more differences. We can divide those transmissions based on the generations. So when 8 HP has been introduced and released, it, had, it was a first generation, and this is the first generation transmission that we have in the car right now. And we had a second generation and third. So the Supra came with a third generation, 8HP51. It's designed to shift quicker and be better. It has some ups, it has some downs. I mean, it's better and worse at the same time. But we do prefer to have 70, which is way more durable, easier to get, cheaper. So that's the choice. And it was possible to have this as a plug and play fit because of the bell housing. And here comes the story. As you've already seen, there are a couple of versions of the bell housings. Depending on the engine that it came from, uh, came with from a factory. So usually in the BMW, it's a V8 bell housing or a six cylinder bell housing. So 45 has a little different bell housing, 70 has a little bit uh, different. And obviously the N63 versions V8 have completely different. Then again, the bell housings and total shapes and uh, weights and lengths depend on the brand. So BMW makes 8 HPs, Audi uses 8 HPs, Jaguar, Dodge, there are multiple versions. In this case, we have 
BMW engine in it, because let's be honest, it's a B58, so it's a BMW engine with a BMW transmission, so that was a direct fit. Um, there are also rear-wheel drive versions and all-wheel drive versions, so BMWs with, let's say, 8 HP 70s may come with just a two-wheel drive at the rear or all-wheel drive, so it has a transfer case, additional shaft going to the front, and then a transfer case in the front making it all-wheel drive, but there's a third type uh, of the 8 HPs which has a transfer in the bell housing, so you have like a big box with the output shaft and then two um, two shafts in the front coming from the bell housing. So for example, Audi RS6 uses it. Some, some bigger SUV models that has all-wheel drive uses it. So there are many variants of the 8HP and you need to be sure you, need, you pick up the right one for your application. So again, in this case, we have a BMW Natalie 57, which is a 3-liter diesel 8HP, mated to B58, which is a 3-liter gasoline engine, but it's a direct fit. First generation, easy to buy, cheap, reliable, really strong. The difference between shifting speeds on the third and first generation is a little, so that's no different for us. I'm down a loop, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so when we drive all the classes through, I want to check oil level again because I feel that we have... It, it will be full now because the GCU hasn't been connected, so it has been running maximum line pressure. But obviously, yeah, we can double check. Uh, we'll do the adaptation. Uh, so yeah, let's plug into it and let's get the interesting stuff done. All right. All right, so it goes into here. Yeah. You need to plug your computer to it. Yes. Uh, we're connected to the GCU. Mm -hmm. um, are we? Let's switch the ignition on. It should be on. It should be on. Okay, 12 volt. We have trans temperature reading zero, so we may not have the, the plug all the way in. So let's just leave the car and let's see if we have the plug connected. No, I don't think it's latched all the way because I think it should go more to the, more to the bottom. Okay. Let's, let me do the outputs adaptation. So it will adapt all the solenoids in the transmission. And here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is an automated process where GCU learns the parameters of all the solenoids because they have certain resistances. Mm -hmm. So it stores all the parameters, so it's calibrated. And yeah, if we want, we can do another check of the shaft speeds. So if you want to rotate the output shaft, just rotate the wheels. Think it's a park lock oh, the park lock is okay. So we can ignore it for now. All right, let's drop the car down. Let's fire it up. Yeah, so it's up. Okay, start the engine. Okay. Okay, stop the engine. Switch off. Up. Yeah. Okay, we need to go through the wiring and check because we don't have, well, wait, just do one thing. Oh, I think we're still not plugged all the way. Um, we'll probably drop the connector and see if the, if the ring is pushed all the way. Okay. So yeah, lift it up. Okay, so ignition, let's start the engine. That's 8 HP 70. Okay, and the next step is to start the static adaptation. So you have the park brake, right? Yes. Yes. So engage it, engage drive mode, please. Okay. 20 seconds. That doesn't matter. And starting the 
static adaptation. So right now the transmission will go through all the gears that's happening here on the on the laptop. I'm keeping the foot you, pedal. Yeah, you can keep the, the, brake. the brake pedal, although it has a park brake oh, yeah, as true. well. So it will not go anywhere. So it will take a while. It's fully automated process. So GCU engages the clutches and observes how they behave. And that's pretty much the whole point of this, uh, of this process. Right now we're doing nothing, just waiting until it finishes. So it's doing third gear right now. Okay, and hold like 1000 RPM. Okay, so uh, we've been chasing our tails a little bit. I've been checking all the settings why the adaptation hasn't been processing. And in fact, yesterday I said that uh, we need to check the valves and we did it with the mechatronics from the transmission that had the wrong bell housing and we had all the valves uh, reading nicely, presenting the good values, but we skipped this part today. And it turns out that looking at those graphs, those graphs present the draw that each solenoid has. So we can see that solenoid one, two, three, four, five, because they're in a sequence, they have a proper draw. The next one we know for a fact from our documentation that it should be equal to, to, the, mm -hmm. to the previous ones with the following one and just the two other ones have a lower reading. So we have a faulty solenoid uh, six, six, so we'll just drop it. Maybe that's the reason why the transmission uh, hasn't been in the car still. So yeah, let's check it out. All right, cool. <laughs> Sixth time is the charm. So the adaptation is done. It took a little while. Uh, most likely to because of the two things. Uh, first, we have dropped the TCM out, so we have no oil sheet loads of air in the system, and we also had this like leftovers from the from the mixed uh, oil with with the water and God knows what else. But anyways, the adaptation is done, so we drop the car, we'll drive it around, so it's uh, so it rotates, uh, sorry, it circles the the whole oil thing, and we'll run the adaptation once again. Um, yeah, so so far so good. Exciting! Really exciting. See how it works. So, after a long and uneven fight, because it has been an uneven fight. We're driving. So it's going. First yeah, time. It's, yeah. Okay, so the first part that we need to do is the adaptation, uh, the dynamic adaptation. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're going to roll in each of the gears to let it adapt the gear ratio. Because right. GC also learns the gear ratios. Um, because we allow to have like the custom rate, uh, ratios. So let's just get to normal road. Our first shifts will be like off throttle. So we'll be lifting the throttle while doing the, the shift. All right. Yes, lift the throttle but and make an... Uh, so you need to go to, to the manual. side or use paddles. Yeah, lift throttle and now up shift. Okay, and we continue driving. So right now, uh, GCU calibrates the ratio of each of the gears. Okay, and... Now we can do an upshift. Paddles should work as well. Okay, yeah, let's continue driving. Get up to the speed. Yeah, I can see. Okay, it adapts. So now we can do upshift to the next gear. Okay, well, let's drive. That small wine is the differential. Right? That small wine is the differential it's because it's fully locked right now. It is fully, fully. 
let's uh, let's accelerate a little bit if we can. Yeah. So we have the full engagement. Okay, now it's fully engaged. We can make an upshift, no throttle. Okay, let's continue. Like we have a bump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if there is a bump, just uh, just down small. In the yeah, but if you need to downshift, then do off throttle downshifts. But yeah, it's yeah. it's really up to up to you. I guess left is quieter. Yeah, I can feel the differential. The differential is lots, right? Yeah. It's like an upshift. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. So, right now we have all the gears learned. So, whenever we have a place to stop, just go downshift, downshift, and decelerate to the stop so we can find some, some good place to do it. So, GCU stirs everything permanently when we're in manual. Uh, sorry, when you're in neutral, mm -hmm. uh, so we can just stop literally anywhere. Okay, and now we go to neutral. Okay, and back to drive, and we we drive. If you switch to side, then the differential locks, and yeah, we what. And now you can shift with light loads and every time that we're going to shift it will uh, learn. At some right. point we will need to present it with the maximum torque, so just at some point we'll need to accelerate. We don't need to actually get the big speed, but we want GCU to see the maximum torque that is going to face reading from the ECU. That road might be a bit bigger. Alright, so let's, let's go there. Even two, three seconds of full load is enough for GCU to register and save. Uh, the point of it is to allow it to scale the tables because internally it builds the adaptation in certain tables, so they need to be scaled somehow. This is why we use this to, um, to learn the range. So the whole point of the standalone is to be able to override the original um, control strategy so we can fully lock it or we can map it depending on let's say torque or speed or whatever else but in this case we have it fully locked so whenever we drive position it's open and whenever we're in manual position it's fully locked that's just a simple setup for now um, yeah and here we can we can see the torque uh, that we registered and we can see that yeah we've we reached a higher value than we did previously so the GC already scaled it so that was the full throttle right uh, not quite not quite because it's oh. slippery so it's okay uh, it's gonna spin anyways okay so like I do uh, like a fifth or sixth gear, the same thing, so it will get a lot more load. Uh, right, sure. We don't need to actually accelerate, we just need to to let the GCU see the value, so it scales the tables. Then we stop, do the neutral thing, drive, and then it will adapt properly all the time. show you how we see the way that it adapts so we have two channels and we've been talking about how to define how to tune the GCU what it involves so we have on the left side we have input shaft speed which is mm -hmm. like the engine speed and he, here we have the input shaft speed target which is result of what we define here so that's a table and it has a function of gears and the torque and we define how quick of a shifts we want mm -hmm. and then as you can see it draws a line when doing up shift how quickly this line falls so you know when we're cruising we can actually request a low rate so that the rate uh, so that the shifts are not aggressive it can be like super low value because we're not in a rush anyways All right. so let's have those values nice and low 
and then have them gradually go up. Since the, mo the street the more car torque, the more faster. Yes. The so the increment is like it's super low at the uh, lighter torques, but then we ramp it up like drastically. So okay. you can see that around 400 newton meters, it will be like 15,000 RPM drop, and then we can do like 25,000 RPM drop. So it's a significant. Yeah. significant uh, you know rates what's the maximum then oh it's pretty much as much as physics actually allow um, like 60 millisecond shifts but they're crazy fast so we don't need them that would be just annoying what kind of number that would be probably compared? around 30,000 35,000 right. so right. those will give us pretty quick shifts at the, at the full load anyways yeah uh, so yeah okay so we can go back to driving now I couldn't even notice this yeah, uh, so, you know, since the GCU is like the very universal controller, we have to ex expect that customer may run a 2000 horsepower car or like 150 horsepower car. So there is no base map at all. It always adapts and obviously the more you drive, the, the better it gets. So it's just a matter of driving and letting it learn. If we change the parameters, we need to let it shift and, you know, just, just, just learn. Uh, so that's the whole point of it. Right now we just drive and we have fun of driving and we you know get better and better every single time All so right. that's the only thing now what if I, what if i put it in the automatic does it right the automatic now, is not right now it's not programmed at all but can i yeah, change we, gear still uh yes yeah, so in if if at some point we add the automatic mode we define what speeds you wanted to shift at various loads so we have to like build a table and even if you're in the automatic and if you hit the upshift or downshift, you will override it for a couple of seconds. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but right now there is no auto table at all. So it's manual in both positions. The only difference is, uh, is the uh, differential lock engagement. So I'm gonna put it in automatic control. Yeah. And now the diff is unlocked. But the diff works, so... Yeah? So how's the first impression? <laughs> it moves. It moves, yeah. Uh, of course it's a bit rough still. Yes. But yeah, it drives. A bit, a bit rough still, but I guess it's learning. Yeah. And see the diff? It's like... It's 100%. Yeah, you got faster. Yeah, it doesn't play. It's a lot easier to drive, at least to play with it. So that's your daily driver. Then. Yeah. The automatic mode is not yet working, but tomorrow we're gonna do some more tuning and I want the automatic to work. So I want this car also to be the, like a stock. the, daily, yeah, the daily driver that it is. Mm. So very versatile. You can drive it hard or drive it to yeah to the maximum. You can mm. drift it or if you don't want to log off the dip, you can just drive past on the track or whatever. Mm. And if you want to drift, you just log off the rear and mm. you have the handbrake and the clutch and just have fun. Everything you need. Yeah, that's what I want. And on Sunday you drive to the storage and rents and. You even notice that is that's the race car, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so yeah. it's best of both worlds. Like. Mm. <laughs> totally different from the stock <laughs> the differential. It's awesome. That happened. I accidentally shifted to automatic that's when it drops the differential i saw what happened mm. yeah. the car went straight like mm. immediately yeah so scary open diff is scary <laughs> you want the locked up diff it's unpredictable yeah, what predictable, car is doing yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah that that makes a lot of difference and with the stock the TCM, 
you cannot change gear if you are too high or too low RPM. But now, when you change the gear, it's immediately changed, not yeah. hesitating or limited. So you and know not, what you get. Yeah, and it's not changing automatically to a smaller gear or, mm. or higher gear, like the stock one is. So we can adjust all those values when it allows us to shift. you think those rear tires <laughs> <laughs> last <laughs> week? <laughs> well, it's still slippery, but we'll see when the snow starts to start, mm. starts to melt. Mm. They will be done by <laughs> by spring, I promise. All right, more tuning and driving and everything <laughs> more fun was it left left yeah mix it right right or ghost eight <laughs> we can turn around That's about for today. The yeah, take the, that yeah. door. It's already like 3 a.m. So we'll call it a day and continue tomorrow a little bit before Bartek has to move home. Yeah, see ya. See you tomorrow. The car is pretty much done yes. for now. We had some issues, but... Uh... Yeah, it has been a long trip, long journey to getting here. If there is a Murphy law, we, we had it all. <laughs> we had it all. Um, Faulty transmissions and such. And... Yeah, so we had a different type of a transmission. So we had to source different transmission. Then it turned out this transmission has been full of water and different you know, yeah. problems and some mechatronics issues but at the end of the day we have a working combo we have everything double triple checked and it drives so how yeah. are your feelings about the whole project uh i'm still excited i haven't really understood what happened okay. uh it's a daily car so it's important to me that it runs smoothly and runs because good that's but your only car to drive yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and also uh, reliable yeah reliable so that's that's what I want for our daily car. I don't want to ruin it too much. Yes. But now I think, well, we already cruised it, yes. so it works yeah. pretty nice. We have the automatic mode working, the yeah. manual mode working. We have a control over the diff at the back. So, by the way, the diff control. Oh, it's 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 great. It's I I thought the Supra had a good differential before, but I could definitely see some. Some, sometimes that it wasn't engaging properly and that made the car unpredictable. Okay, but right now being fully engaged? It's 100% luck, it's uh, fully predictable, it's so much easier to drive, at least, at, especially with the snow. Yeah, so now I can do relax, go to the grocery store, <laughs> then hit the manual mode, be like fully manual with the clutch pedal and yeah. uh, with the diff control. It's a fun car to drive. Yeah, and you can still easily adjust, like if you want auto mode to work okay. differently or shift more aggressively, you just plug in, adjust, and that's it. Um, I'm sure there's still a lot to go through Obviously. in the software side to tune yes. all the things that I wanted to, but it looks super promising. I can't thank you enough. Like. And we had the transmission problems, uh, but thank God we were in the right place yes. with okay. him. Like they they rebuilt the all the automatic transmissions, and we had an, maybe three different gearboxes laying around over there and switching parts, and we got it solved. 
would wake the field. Yeah, it's a uh, not obvious problem, but we found it. Yeah, yeah a lot of manpower of dropping it up and down, flashing, but yeah, good job done. And yeah, it's accomplished. Yeah, it's interesting. It is. <laughs> and I learned something, so <laughs> it's not wasting time. Oh yeah, so we hope to see more of those Supras or any, any other kinds, but yeah, more of those products with the standalone controls. So, oh, let's make it grow. Yeah, yeah. And, and for the Finnish people, I think AM Gear is maybe starting to sell your units. So. Sure. And all the installs and everything do the whole thing here. So yeah, I think we are interested about that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's good product and yeah. So now if you want to see. find out anything more in Finland, just hit up their YouTube channels and Facebook pages and uh, find out more info. Why test the whole of the P or I'm here with that P? Why test the whole of Yeah, cool. But yeah, thank you so much thank for coming. So much. It was. Very yes, informative, so and yeah. I'm excited about the car once again. Yeah, enjoy. I, yeah, I, the way we played today it with with some closed area in the Mexico. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's it's. I could have done it before. That's good. That's and always, if there is any room to improve, we're happy to help. Yeah. We're happy to grow, and uh, we'll just do it. All right. Bye. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.